Hi everyone, today I'd like to try out two things that I got on Amazon recently. One is a watercolor sketchbook and the other one is a set of watercolor brush markers. So the watercolor sketchbook is by Paul Rubens. I think it's a Chinese brand. I've seen a lot of Paul Rubens uh, things on Amazon. Some are uh, watercolors and you can find the watercolor palette and um, this has had a nice review and I wanted to give it a shot. It's hot press watercolor paper and it's uh, 300 GSM so it's pretty thick and also it has 20 sheets. You can see it has a rubber band to close it and it's hard cover. Also it has a ribbon to mark your page. Now the uh, cover is is pretty interesting. It's it's plastic. It's um it's not rubbery. Well, kind of, but it's squishy plastic, but it's still hard cover. So you can see the logo on it, and it says Paul Rubens and something in Chinese underneath. And um. What I like about this is that the pages are perforated here. So all the pages are like that. So if you paint something that you really like and you want to give it or sell it or something, you can always just like remove it and it'll be out of your sketchbook and then you can just um, mail it or do whatever you want with it. I wonder if this is a watermark. I think this is a watermark right here. Yeah, it says Paul Rubens. I don't know if you can see it. But it's, um, it has a very slight texture. Uh, but, you know, it's not like super, super smooth like Bristol paper. But, um, I don't know. It feels really nice. I think I'm gonna like this. And here, unfortunately, what is this? There's something here. Well, and so in the back, you can see that there's a little pocket, but I don't know. I'm gonna try not to destroy the thing. Uh, it's it's in the the cover there's something that sticks out as you can see and so the paper has holes in them or oh, not holes but indentures here there's the the ribbon you can see where the ribbon was trying to find a good angle for you to see it but you can see it on both pages. And the bumps continue for quite a few pages. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four pages that are weird in the end. Actually, I, I cut one off too, so it was five pages. I used this for um, a test, a sample. But anyway, it feels like really nice paper for now. The second item is a pack of 48 Artix, Artix watercolor brush markers. Uh, so they're water-based ink, blendable, and they have brush tips. Uh, when they mean brush tips, like a true brush pen, it's like they have actual individual bristles. So I got this, these two, because they were pretty affordable and I wanted to see what they were like. Uh, there's not, like a lot of... Um, 
cheap art supplies, you probably won't find the individual markers once you run out of ink. And you probably will have to buy to buy a, a pack. And also they're probably not very light fast. To be sure, I would have to do a light fast test probably, but I only get them for fun just to doodle in a sketchbook. So none of them have a color name on them. They only have a number here and a number here. So I don't know what this is, but this is probably the, the number that corresponds to the color, which is this one here. Yep. So now to be um, sure of the actual color of those brushes, I'm going to do swatches and then I'll do a little painting in this. So again, these are art supplies that come from China. They're very reasonably priced and uh, let's see how well they work. I did those swatches uh, about a couple of weeks ago and as you can tell, they're very vibrant colors. And I really like how there's a nice variety of each colors. Like there's a lot of blues and greens and browns, uh, reds and oranges and pinks and purples. I really like that. I like also that there's a nice range of grays here. Usually there's not as many grays, so that's really neat. Now, because they've been dry for uh, quite a while now, I want to find out if they're still re-wet. Well, uh, as you can see that you can't see the, um, the brush strokes on the colored area and you can't see the brush strokes either on the wet area. So that's really neat. It means it blends very well. All right, let's see if I can re-wet them now. It looks like I can dissolve everything again, even after them being dry for a couple of weeks already. Look at this. That's pretty amazing. You can't even see the line that was there originally. Let's try another color. I not work with all the colors like that because some are more staining than others. And also the paper that I'm using is not the best quality. You can see it's peeling right now. That said, it dissolved everything. All right, so they do re-wet very well. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun using them. I started by putting down some liquid frisket by Schminke to reserve some whites. And because on my reference photo, there was a lot of highlights, I didn't reserve all those highlights with the frisket. I wanted to see if I could add some white highlights with a gel pen or maybe a Posca pen or something. I wanted to do half and half just to test the paper with the frisket and then the paint to see if I could put some white highlights on top of it. Once the frisket or masking fluid was dry, then I started putting my lighter colors down. And I must say those pens aren't or at least the colors that I use today, they're not very juicy, but I think it's just as well because it allows them to be nice and smooth and not being very streaky. So I was able to do pretty uniform washes with just the pens, just the brush pens. And I must say I was very pleased with the way that they're dilute. It's so easy to use a brush and water and just spread that color around. It's very, very nice. So I used my lightest, more yellowy orange for a base layer. And then I added some darker layers over it and then um, kind of spread it around with water. And then I used a third orange or more of a, a darker red, I guess, for the darkest colors of the blood orange. And again, I was able to make it melt really easily. That was so smooth. It was so nice to use a brush on top of that.
And then at some point, I wanted to create some darker tones with another orange that afterwards I regretted using because it was a not as natural looking orange. So I figured I was going to have to try to fix that problem. The orange was not as yellow as I wanted it to be after I used that uh, weird orange. So I tried to add more layers of that yellowy orange that I used at first and it worked a little bit, but not enough for me. So I thought I'd have to uh, do something eventually to fix that problem. But in the meantime, I wanted to test those brush pens a different way. And when I used the darker red, I decided to use my lighter orange to spread that red around to avoid hard lines because earlier when I had spread it around with a brush and water, it kind of muted the color. It was not as bright. So I thought that if I used just another color with an, uh, with the brush pens, it might keep the, the brightness of the colors. And I was happily surprised. It blends so well. You can use any colors and they will blend very well on the paper together without using a brush and water. And I think that's awesome. Once I was pretty much done with the darker red, I decided to test the paper and the colors and I wanted to see if they would lift from the paper. Remember that at that point I had probably four or five layers of colors. So I used a brush, um, a little harder I guess, and water and then I just scrubbed the areas that I wanted to be lighter. And I was able to remove quite a lot, but I was never able to go back to some pure white which I didn't want anyway. So I was able to lift some of that orange that I didn't want there in the first place and bring that yellowy orange back a little bit. So it lifted some of the pigments and when it was all dry, I was able to add more of the yellow orange also over that. I hope it makes sense. <laughs> But basically, I just didn't really plan this uh, this painting very well and I tried to improvise as I went, which also allowed me to really test the supplies. Now, I must say, and I think I forgot to mention that the paper is 100% cotton. I really like the texture. It is hot pressed, but it does have a slight texture, which I really like. It really took a beating with all my testing of the brush pens on it and it worked really well. It never budged and um, it took all the different layers very nicely. Yeah, so far I really like it. The colors of the brush pen stayed nice and bright even when they were dry. So it w they were not absorbed into the paper. Those brushes are really nicely pigmented. When I was done with all the colors, I decided to add some colored pencils and I basically, I tried different colors, but I was not sure what I was doing and I just ended up using the white just to add a few details here and there. I didn't do much of that. And then finally, I tried to add some brighter highlights. I tried with a gel pen and it worked to some extent, but on the pulp part of the orange, it absorbed the white a lot more, probably because I had a lot of uh, colors, a lot of layers there. So I tried also with a Derwent paint marker. I think 
for this painting the the white was not opaque enough and I ended up using a Posca marker which I used three four layers of to finally achieve a more opaque white so that the highlights would pop and would be as white as the highlights that I had saved with the masking fluid earlier. Talking about the masking fluid, the paper took it very nicely, nothing ripped, it didn't damage the surface of the paper. So this is my final thoughts. I love the markers, I love the paper, I can't wait to use them both again. It was a lot of fun, I really enjoyed myself. I hope this little review was of help to you guys and I hope you enjoyed my little painting. I'll see you soon with another video. Have a wonderful day, bye bye. Thank you.